Spread it like. Hey, welcome back. So today we're going to take a look at making a match three game similar to Candy Crush. I feel really strange introducing Candy Crush because I feel like everybody in the world knows what it is. But in case you don't, here's a little look at what Candy Crush is. Candy Crush is a match three game. It's certainly not the first that ever came out. There's probably a million of these on the Google Play Store. But learning how to make one can be really helpful in learning how to make other games like, say, Tetris or pretty much anything that uses a grid. So the way this works is you swipe on your screen to swap positions. Uh, and then if you have three in a row or up and down, then they will disappear. And you'll get all these kind of cool little notifications telling you that you did well. So we're going to take a look at how to make this today. All right, so first and foremost, we're going to be using uh, Unity 3D. And then if you don't have Unity 3D, you can get this by going to the Unity 3D website, which I'll include in the description. Uh, it is unity3d.com. If you just go here, you can click on Get Unity. And if you use the personal edition, it's free so long as your company's making less than $100,000 a year. Uh, Plus and Pro are based on a monthly subscription, and they definitely can be worth it. It just depends on you. Uh, if you use a personal edition, if you publish to any platform, you have to use a splash screen. Um, so, yeah. It's pretty, pretty good. So let's go ahead and open up a new Unity project here. Now I made some art the other day that I'm going to be using in this. So I'm going to create a new project. It's going to wait a second while it's thinking. Uh, this new project is going to be in the 2D environment. We're not going to use any asset packages right away. I'm going to call this Match3 Clone. And then we'll just create project. So first things first, we're just going to be talking about kind of setting up our project today. And then the next thing we'll do is talk about how we set up the board so that everything can kind of be in a grid. And then from there, we'll add some dots to it of multicolors, and then we'll add power-ups and stuff and uh, particle effects and all kinds of things that make it cool. Uh, your Unity layout might not look like mine. By default, Unity looks like this. I don't really like having to switch back and forth between the scene and the game view when I'm making something 2D. So I like to turn it to 2 by 3 then I like to change it even more. I take my project window and dock it underneath my hierarchy, and then I also make my files nice and small. The first thing we should do is change our aspect ratio. Uh, if we look at Candy Crush, its aspect ratio is 9 by 16. Uh, depending on which phone you're using, some phones are uh, 9 by 18, I think. Some of those new Samsung phones are 9 by 18. So uh, over here in the game view where it says free aspect, I'm going to click that. And I already have a bunch of portrait display modes here. If you don't have one, go down here and click the plus symbol. And I'm going to call this match 3 portrait. Uh, you want to change this from fixed resolution to aspect ratio. If it's fixed resolution, it's a certain number of pixels, which can be really helpful if you're porting to a very specific device that has a very specific number of pixels. But in this case, we want it to be pretty wide. So we're going to have our width be 9 and our height be 16. And then if you click OK, you'll create this. I already have a bunch of portrait modes, though, so I'm just going to click Cancel and choose one of my phone portrait modes. Uh, OK, so now first thing that we're going to do is make some folders over here. So I'm going to right click, go to Create, and I'm going to create a folder. This first one I'm going to call Art. I'm going to create another folder to hold our scripts. So folder, scripts, and another folder to hold scenes. We'll probably use a bunch more folders, but this is all we're going to create for now. Scenes. OK, cool. Now before I go much further, I'm going to make sure that I save this scene. So if I go up to File, I'm going to choose Save Scene As. And it's going to ask me where I want to save it. I want it in the Assets folder, in the Scenes folder, and I have to name this scene. I'm going to call it Main, just something nice and simple like that. And click Save. From now on, whenever I go up to File and choose Save Scenes, I won't have to worry about that. So uh, first, I'm going to go to my Art, and I'm going to import the Art assets I made the other day. So if I take a look here at my desktop, the art assets I made yesterday were, uh, I made an asset for a dot, something I called a squircle, uh, something for background, 
And then I'm also going to import one of these palettes. I'm going to use this one. And the game palette is just so I know the colors my dots are going to be. Now, right now, these are uh, 512 by 512. You can see that right there. The squircle, the background, and the dot. I'm going to start with the background image here. I'm going to set its pixels per unit to be 512 so that this takes up exactly one unity unit. And on this one, since I have a lot of pixels, I don't have to worry about that filter. I can just leave it by linear. I'll click apply. Uh, now I'm going to drag my uh, background image into the scene. And this creates uh, an empty game object for the sprite renderer. So I'm going to rename this from background to tile background, something a little more descriptive. Now with this, I don't need to add a collider or anything like that, but I am going to go and make one more folder here. So I'm going to click Create, Folder, and I'm going to call this Prefabs, which is for objects that I'm going to use again and again and again. I'll grab my tile background, and I will drag it into my Prefabs folder. Uh, now that that's in my uh, Prefabs folder, I can delete the one that's in the scene. You can always tell if it's a prefab, because when it's in the hierarchy, it'll be blue instead of black like that. So I'll just right click on this and delete it from the scene. All right, now I'm gonna create another empty game object in my hierarchy, and I can do that a few different ways. I can right click and choose Create Empty. I can go up here to Create and choose Create Empty, or I can go to Game Object and choose Create Empty. So I'm just gonna go Create, Create Empty, and I'm gonna call this the board. This is gonna be a representation of the board that my dots and squircles are gonna be on. So board. Um, right now, this has a position in space of that, that, and that. I'm going to change it to zero, 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 just for safety's sake. You don't need to do this, but I like to have things kind of neat. I'm also going to over here next to where I have my name. You can see this kind of multicolored cube. If I click that, I can choose an icon for it. If I choose one of these dots, it'll show up in the view as a dot. See right there but I want to be able to find it, so I'm going to choose an icon right there. Now if I zoom out, I can easily get back to the board by actually, yep, there we go, by clicking on the board. Uh, okay, so this is kind of just the basic setup here. Um, next time, we're going to make the board actually auto-generate on the scene. So thank you very much. I hope this finds you well, and have a good night.